This video will show you how to do synthetic division, which is a nice little shortcut to polynomial long division, which I assume you've already been taught. The setup on synthetic division is just a matter of using your coefficients only. Notice there's no x's and x squareds here. It's just the coefficients written in descending order of these exponents. Be sure if there's a negative that you drag that negative sign down or you're going to get something wrong. Another important thing on the setup is this is x minus 2, but notice what's in the box here is a positive 2. So you always want to change that sign. Now the other part of this setup is to take that first coefficient, whatever it is, and to drag it right on down. If you've got lined paper, then you're going to want to skip a line when you write the 5. This is the setup you would do for synthetic division. The rest of the problem is just a matter of multiplying and adding. 2 times 5 is 10, and where you're going to put that is underneath this blank right here. Add. Negative, three, negative 13 plus 10 is negative 3. Go back to the 2. Multiply again. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Add. Get 4. Go back to the 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Add and get 0. The fact that this is a 0 right here tells me that I have no remainder. You know from polynomial long division, sometimes you got a remainder and sometimes you didn't. Now these are just numbers. They are coefficients that stand for a certain polynomial. Because we started with x cubed, our answer here is going to drop down to x squared minus 3x. This is a positive 4. We can't just leave that hanging out there like a 4. I need to put a plus 4 to complete this being a polynomial. So this is the solution to this polynomial long division. Let's take a look at the long division process to show you why we did some of the things we did. First off, when you did this division long division wise, you did 5x cubed divided by x is 5x squared. Then you came back and multiplied that and got 5x cubed minus 10x squared. What I teach when I do polynomial long division, because we have to subtract here and because there's these opposite signs and all that you can get messed up on, I say draw the line, change the signs change the signs. That's why we change this sign right here in the beginning. We're not going to have to change the sign multiple times like we did with polynomial long division. This is a matter of getting that sign changed in the beginning and then you're done with it. Now what happens here? Cancels out. Negative 13 plus 10 is negative 3x squared. Where else do you see a negative 3? Right there. Take a look at the numbers. There's your negative 13, 10, negative 13, 10. So this is why the, the synthetic division works, is because it really is a shortcut on the long division. So let's take a look at another one. There's the problem. We're going to set it up with the coefficients, 3, negative 2, 6, and negative 4. Notice our problem is in descending order of the exponents. This set x plus 2, so the number I bring out here is going to be a negative 2. Bring your 3 all the way down. Draw your line and multiply. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Add. Negative 2 times negative 8 is 16. Add. Negative 2 times 22 is negative 44. Add. We didn't get 0 here. This is our remainder. Now how we're going to write this up is the same thing we did a second ago. This was 3x cubed, so our answer is going to drop down to x squared minus 8x plus 22, but we have this remainder of negative 48. You just don't leave it out here as negative 48. You do like you did when you learned how to divide in grade school. You write that remainder over what you divided by. Not just over negative 2, over what you divided by. You divided by the binomial x plus 2. This is your entire answer. You don't need to write that word remainder on that. I just wrote that in the beginning to let you know that was your remainder. Hopefully you notice that there's something missing here. You have an x cubed and it jumps down to a plain old x. We are missing the x squared term. The way these are set up, if you are missing an exponent, you need to supply a placeholder in this position here. So that here's the setup. We have a 4 for the 4x cubed. We don't have an x squared term, so we need to have the placeholder 0. Then the negative 6 and then the negative 5. If you don't put the placeholder in there, you're going to have things lined up improperly. And of course, this says x plus 1, so we're putting a negative 1 here. Bring your 4 all the way down, draw your line, and start your multiplying. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Add. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. Add. 
negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2, add and get negative 3. And then let's fill in our polynomial. Since it was x cubed to begin with, we're dropping that power down 1, x squared, minus 4x, minus 2, with the remainder negative 3 over x plus 1. Sometimes you have to supply two placeholders. Notice we're missing an x to the fourth, and we're also missing an x squared. So that this is our setup. There's our 0 for our missing x to the fourth. There's our 0 for our missing x squared. But the rest of the problem is set up exactly the same. That was x plus 3. Therefore, we're putting a negative 3 out there. Take this first coefficient, whatever it is, drag it all the way down, draw your line, and begin. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Add and get negative 9. Negative 3 times negative 9 is 27. Add and get 25. Negative 3 times 25 is negative 75. Add and get negative 75. Yes, some of these numbers do get large. Don't think you've done something wrong if it happens that way. Negative 3 times negative 75 is positive 225. Add and get 229. Negative 3 times 229 is negative 687. Add and we have negative 689. So pretty large remainder. Now we're going to fill in the polynomial. That started with x to the fifth, so that we always drop down one power. So this will be x to the fourth. Then this will be x cubed. That's a positive 25, so I do need to put the plus in there. x squared minus 75x plus 229 minus 689 over the x plus 3 that you divided by. So pretty large, but same process. Notice, all of the problems we have done so far have all been divided by x plus something or plain old x minus something. That's the best time to use synthetic division if you are dividing by plain old x plus or minus something. It is possible to do synthetic division if you are dividing by something with a coefficient in front of x. You just have to be kind of tricky about it, and it sometimes creates some ugly numbers. But here's what you have to do if this is not plain old x. I could make this plain old x by just dividing this whole thing by 2. But if I divide the whole divisor by 2, I have to divide this whole thing by 2. Then I'm going to work this out. This is everything here divided by 2, everything here divided by 2, which gives me this polynomial, because 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 1 divided by 2 is 1 half, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then over here, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 divided by 2 is a half. So this creates some fractions that you have to deal with. Sometimes they're not bad, sometimes they get ugly. So set up your synthetic. This is x plus a half, so this is a negative 1 half. Here's your coefficients, and we do need a placeholder here. There is no x cubed term, so that's why there's a placeholder here. Bring your 4 down and start your multiplication. Negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. Add and get negative 2. Negative 1 half times negative 2 is a positive 1. Add and get negative 1. I didn't really leave myself enough room here. Negative 1 half times negative 1 is a positive 1 half plus that 1 half is a whole, 1. Negative 1 half times 1 is negative 1 half. Now 2 minus a half is 1 and a half, which is the same as 3 halves. I'd rather write it as the improper. Let's go back and fill in your polynomials. This was x to the fourth, so it's going to be x cubed minus 2x squared minus 1x. That is a positive 1, so put a 1 here. This is a positive 3 halves over what you divided by, which was x plus 1 half. You can't leave this like this. This is a, These are improper fractions in the middle of another fraction. The easiest way to deal with this is to notice what the common denominator is. The common denominator is 2. I'm going to multiply on the top of this fraction by 2 and on the bottom by 2. By doing that, I'm really just multiplying by 1, so I'm not changing any values. 3 halves times 2, the 2's cancel out, I just get 3. Here, I've got to do 2 times the whole thing. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times a half is 1. Notice what that denominator is. It's what we divided by initially. So there's our whole polynomial. This with this remainder.